Hello, today we're going to talk about care of your single reeds. One of the first things you'll notice when you take the reed out of the box, it's in this little plastic container. We want to dispose of that, uh, recycle it if you can. We're not going to use those again. I encourage you getting a quality uh, reed guard. This is one that's commercially available um, or a reed case that has a hard flat surface that allow your reeds to dry against. Once we've taken the reed out of the reed case for the first time, we want to assess it. So let's have a careful look at it. We want to look at the tip. We want to make sure the tip is relatively straight. One of the problem areas with inferior reeds or reeds that are too soft is the tip will get wavy and it gets wavy because it is warped. We want to make sure that we encourage our reeds to dry as straight and flat as possible. That's why we want to use a reed guard or a, a, a specialty reed case to allow for our reeds to dry in that way. But before we have ever played any of our reeds, we want to check the back of the reed. So I'm running my thumb against the grain. I'm feeling for any bumps or ridges. And as this is a brand new reed, there are some bumps and ridges that are here. And I'm going to do a step in the process that it's like sanding, but we're not going to take any material away. We're going to use a piece of just regular blank paper. I'm going to polish this reed. Use even finger pressure, concentric circles against a hard surface. I'm using a table. You can use a, a door or a textbook with a hard cover. Doesn't matter which direction you go. The idea here is that we are aiming to polish and smooth out the back side of the reed. So now, when I look at this reed, and if I catch the light ever so slightly, you can see where it's shiny. Those, are, those were high spots before, and now those have been polished out. I'm giving this reed a better chance of, of having consistent tone and vibration, and I don't have anything that is causing extra vibration or stray vibrations happening in my sound. I'll talk about next step. So I've got a little cup of water. This can be a water fountain. This can be a running sink. Um, I'm just using this little cup. Run my reed through it, shake off the excess, and then I can go through the next steps of the process. So now I have my alto saxophone mouthpiece. I'm going to lick and stick. My reed is now adhered to my mouthpiece and I can go through the next steps. I look for the sliver of black. I'm checking the edges. I can feel those edges. I'm applying my ligature while holding on to my reed. Looking at the bottom, making sure that it's square. And lastly, my ligature is below the line on the mouthpiece and below the line of the reed. Square my ligature. Double check all of my positions and then start to tighten. Next up, the seal test. So if I place my mouthpiece against the palm of my hand and then I draw all of the air out of the mouthpiece like I'm sucking on a straw, I should be able to hear this sound. I couldn't catch it quite quick enough, but what you've created is a vacuum where the reed is suctioned to the face of the mouthpiece and then it eventually releases. The longer that suction happens, the longer that vacuum is in place, the better the seal, and we're looking for a good seal always. So now we want to talk about the impacts of um, reed hardness on response and resonance in your, in your tone production. One of the most important things that we can do is learn how to manipulate the reed depending on hardness. Now, we talked before about using the sliver concept, the sliver of black at the tip. Now, the challenge is 
there's no there's no read that's going to be absolutely perfect with that setup. That's our goal. That's our ultimate. That's our ultimate aim is to have that little sliver of black. But here are a couple possible scenarios. Number one, you find that the read is a little bit sluggish. It's a, maybe a little bit squishy or soft sound, um, and we can we can manipulate that. So if you move your read up to the tip or closer to the tip or even beyond where that tip edge is that makes the reed feel a little bit more firm and can make the reed feel a little bit harder a good check for this on both saxophone and clarinet is if you can play a high c your your written high c without much articulation or hard push with your air support or hard tongue you should be able to cleanly articulate that that's that top C. So you play a, a, a C scale on those instruments, and if that top C is really really cleanly defined, and you don't have to really squeeze with your embouchure, so good embouchure support and uh, light tongue, we should have some some confidence with that top note. So that's our that's our test. So here's here's another suggestion. If you find a reed is too hard and maybe you're in between reed sizes. Let's say you, you were on a three and you moved up to a three and a half and it's just a little bit stiff. We could go the opposite and you could move your, your reed down from the tip. I, I was really dramatic there. You probably don't wanna go that far, but you need to be able to adjust it and you need to be able to test it. So find the sweet spot and use the, the resonance. So does the, does the reed sound full? Does it sound rich? Um, do you have the clarity of articulation that you typically have from a good read? And and be picky and move this move this read um, up and down until you find what you consider to be your sweet spot. The more you do it, the more uh, control you have over the quality of your sound, and ultimately the more control you have over the quality of the articulation. Next, we want to talk about how to care for our reeds and encourage our reeds to dry straight and true. One of the problem areas with most reeds is if they are dried improperly, we will see a warp or a wave, especially at the tip. So you get this, this wrinkle effect at the, at the very, very thinnest tip edge of your reed. We will also see oftentimes our reeds um, absorb moisture in the center, which will cause them to rock back and forth on the table of our mouthpiece and encourage that lack of good seal that we've already talked about. In my experience, best way to counteract this is always soak your reeds. So I've got my little cup of Darth Vader water here. I like to suggest about a minute. We let our reeds soak in the water, you'll notice from above there, there's one of my reeds that I've labeled just to keep track. I've, I've got a number one and the date on it. Um, set our reeds in, in just regular, regular lukewarm tap water, water that's too hot. It's gonna shock the fibers and the fibers are gonna expand and open and we're going to release probably too much of the, the natural elasticity or resins that are inside of the, the cane. And we wanna be careful um, if that happens, Chances are what, what you're going to experience is a reed that is really, really loose and will probably be low in pitch. So just be mindful of that. Due to a reed on a day has dramatic impact. So if it's really cold outside in the winter and it is really dry, I would be really hesitant to make any adjustments to a given reed. You might just have to put it back in the box. If it's not working, you're not getting the response that you're, you're hoping for, put it away try another one. And that's why it's a good idea to rotate through. If you've got a reed case that has, has four slots, you've got four options, four reeds that you can be rotating through. If you number them with some sort of sequence or system that's appropriate for you to be able to remember, that's going to be helpful where you can rotate through those reeds and make sure you're not always playing on the same reed until it dies. Reeds will die. That's a fact of life. Um, from the moment that you start playing on it, it's starting to decay and it's starting to change. So just be prepared that it's going to, to, to change enough that it's not going to respond or react the way that you want it to, and you have to be ready. So always make sure you've got 
a healthy supply of reeds that you're rotating through and not making too many adjustments when it is extreme temperatures in your area.